I was always interested in what makes things work and in what makes biological systems work. I enjoy understanding what makes things happen inside cells, inside living organisms, and understanding how we can change that for the better. Since its founding in 2014, the Sanak Peace Prize has been awarded to extraordinary people, government leaders, religious leaders, human rights activists, refugee educators and scientists, people who have inspired the world by loving humanity as much as they love their own family. This year, we honor one of those rare and wonderful individuals who bring together a keen intellect and a commitment to public service, determined to help save lives during the global pandemic. I am thrilled to introduce you to our 2022 Sunak Peace Prize winner, Dr. Sarah Gilbert. I first heard about a new disease that was happening um, at the very beginning of 2020, on the very first day of 2020, when all that had been reported was four cases of pneumonia of unknown cause, which didn't have a name at the time. Now we call it SARS-CoV-2. We didn't know if it would ever get as far as clinical trials at that stage, but we did know that if it was going to be needed, it was going to be needed quickly, so we should start straight away. Sarah and I have been working on making many vaccines against emerging and outbreak pathogens. The platform technology that we use to make the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is a relatively easy technology to make many different vaccines against lots of emerging and outbreak pathogens. And what you do is you take that small part of the virus, the part that the virus uses to get into your body, to get into your cells, and you stick that into your platform technology, your adenovirus. And in the same way, you can make lots of different vaccines against different emerging and outbreak pathogens. The clinical trials normally take between 10 and 15 years to go from uh, the, the starting of making a vaccine all the way through um, to having a licensed product. In the pandemic, we were able to move very swiftly for a number of reasons. I think Sarah's very good at being calm in a crisis and planning ahead, thinking about in six months' time, we're going to need this aspect to be done, therefore we have to start now. We had our vaccine ready for the first clinical trials to start on the 23rd of April in 2020. We expanded into multiple clinical trial sites around the UK. We worked with partners in South Africa and Brazil and in Kenya to test the vaccine in other populations. And we got to that point on the 23rd of November in 2020 when we had our first efficacy result which said that the vaccine was effective. I was very happy to, to see those uh, vaccine efficacy results because it meant that we could continue with the process of getting the vaccine ready to be used around the world. And we then partnered with AstraZeneca who became the um, distributors of the vaccine and of course they also agreed to produce this vaccine not for profit. Members of the university were very clear that this vaccine should be supplied on a not-for-profit basis and that made a massive difference in the ability of this vaccine to reach many people around the world. And to have more than 20 manufacturing sites all around the world which to some extent protected against vaccine nationalism and that's the reason why our vaccine is the most widely distributed. In some countries there's still quite low vaccination rates and I think that's a combination of multiple things. Firstly, many countries don't have existing adult vaccination programs. There has also been hesitancy in accepting the vaccines from some people. So that's something that we have to work on for the future. There's always going to be another pandemic. I think it's very important to have manufacturing facilities for vaccines spread around the world. All the vaccines that are derived from can be shared with multiple manufacturing facilities and then the same vaccine can be made at many different places. We need to vaccinate people regardless of their ability to pay for the vaccine. Sarah's biggest contribution to public health will be of course the COVID-19 vaccine. It's perhaps that going forward, we now understand that vaccines can be made quickly, that can be made cheaply. Uh, well, I think Sarah's work on um, coronavirus vaccines and particularly on, on this one has been um, critical in um, the saving of 
many lives. We can achieve so much when we work together, each bringing our different strengths. I hope that many young people will be inspired in their career choice by knowing about what we achieved and that governments and international organisations will work together to ensure that next time we need to re respond to a disease threat, we will be better prepared than we were in 2020. Thank you.